this is another model that I've found are to be associated with Challenge 13 in the beginner series. There's two ways of looking at this. One way of constructing this would be to consider this as being made from two cubes. We have a small cube in the middle and a larger cube on the outside that's been cut in half. And a simpler way of looking at it is to consider this being built up from two prisms. And that's the way I'll be looking at it. There are some assumptions that I'll be making. One of the assumptions is that the length, width and depth of a prism are all equal, meaning that the hypotenuse of that prism will be at an angle of 45 degrees. So let's get started. Let's start with a line segments tool and create a triangle first. I'll then constrain their orientations to be vertical and horizontal. An assumption I'm going to make here is that these two lines are equal to each other, equal in length. So I'll select them both and click this button, constrain to be equal in length. Before I anchor the model, I'm going to select one of the lines now and constrain its distance to be something like 30 millimeters. Two degrees of freedom left. Let's anchor the model by selecting those two points and click constrain point on point. Next thing, let's extrude the model. The other assumption is that the depth of the model will be the same as its width and height. So 30 millimeters again there. Let's click this button, nearest isometric view. What I want to do now is create another prism at, at this surface. And to do that, I'm first going to create a guideline that goes from the top of this line all the way down to here. So let's select these two lines on that point and click here. Select the line segments tool, click on the top line and drop it anywhere in the bottom line. And I'll constrain this line to be vertical. Let's select it again and click G on the keyboard, converting it into a guideline. Now what I want to do is build a prism using this line here. So I'll select this point and click this button. If I was to draw a triangle now, what we've actually done is created a triangle along that line because I selected that point to create my work plane. Click W to go back into it. Now, since these two lines that I'm highlighting in red are equal, it means that the angle between these two lines are 45 degrees. So these two lines will also be equal. Now, if I was to try and constrain them to be equal, I would have an error message saying redundant constraints. So I'll press Ctrl and Z to undo that. The next thing I want to do is to correctly position a triangle along the hypotenuse such that the line that goes from here to this line, and I'll just click on this button here for you to see it better. This line has to be at the midpoint of the hypotenuse here. One way to do that is to select the points tool and place the point on the first guideline that I, that I drew. And if I was to middle click and rotate, you can see we place the point there. Select the point again and the guideline and then click M on the keyboard to position that point at the midpoint of that guideline. And then to position this triangle in the correct place would be by selecting the guideline and the point and then press this button, constrain points on line. The other way of doing the same thing would be to create two more guidelines from the top to that line and from the bottom that line and then selecting them both and making them equal to each other by clicking this button here. So you can decide which one you prefer. I'm just gonna do that for now. So we've correctly positioned this triangle to be at the middle of the middle of the slanted face, but there's one last thing we need to do, and that is to constrain the size of the triangle. I select one of the lines and click constrain distance, make it 20 millimeters. Now, if I click the extrude button and click and drag on one of the points, I can now give this extrusion as well a depth of 20 millimeters. As you can see here, the last thing I need to do now is to correctly position that prism on the Z axis along the face. If this line here is 30 millimeters and the length of this line is 20 millimeters, that means I've got 10 millimeters left over to play with. Dividing that by two, it means that the distance from here so this line should be five millimeters. There's an easy way of doing that, and that is in the properties panel. If I go back to this radio button where you've got one degree of freedom for select it, and that is the first guideline that I drew, let's constrain its position from this point to be five millimeters. And now if I click the final radio button there in my workflow in the properties panel, you'll see that it's correctly positioned the smaller prism in the middle of the face along these Z axes. Let's click this button for nearest isometric view. 
I'll go to Home and Hide All, and I'll click this button here just to make it less translucent. And now it looks like we've finished the sketch. Some assumptions I made when building this was to assume that the height, length and depth of the prisms were equal. So the next video will be to create the outside calipers. I hope you found this useful. I'll see you in the next video.